at the top of the page. So go back to the front if you have skipped to a different page. Triangle proofs by means of coordinate geometry. And if you did take a look at the note sheet, some of the questions do say the use of the set of axes below is optional. That means that will not be graded. So you can grade, you can use that graph as your work and we'll take a look and grade it. But if it's blank, you won't lose any points. Okay? But in graphing it, you'll see why that could potentially be helpful. Okay? So the format. If you look at step number one, even though it says the set of axes below, graphing it is optional, I suggest that you graph it. So step number one, I have draw and label a diagram in the coordinate plane. You need to have your axes labeled and you need a scale. Okay? Use your straight edge when you're drawing your polygons. And then number two, state and use one of the formulas below to prove or show statements about a figure. Now as far as your conclusion, so you're going to do all the calculations and then you have to write a statement. This is why I have an isosceles triangle. This is why we have a right triangle. And I suggest the format. Does it have to be in that format? No. Okay. My suggestion, you'll see when we actually do one of the proofs, is in the format, since you have this, then this is true. Therefore, you have whatever special type of triangle. So if we go to the table, it's bulleted, and you can follow the table across. If you want to show that line segments are congruent, you're going to use the distance formula. Okay? When you do that, you're showing that the segments are equal in length. Okay? Distance formula for a slanted segment is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. It's different for a horizontal and vertical segment. When you have a horizontal and vertical segment, it's just the difference of the coordinates that aren't the same. So when you have a horizontal segment, your y values will be the same. So your distance formula is going to just be the absolute value of the difference of your x's. In a vertical line segment, the x's are the same. It's going up and down, so you have that change in only the y value. So that's the absolute value of y2 minus y1. So to show that segments are equal in length, we use distance. The middle part, to show that lines are parallel, to show that lines are perpendicular, to show that a segment is in altitude, if you follow across, we use the same formula, which is slope. The slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Change of y over change of x. Now, if the lines are parallel, we want to show that the slopes are equal. So I'm just going to use, again, m for slope. The subscripts 1 and 2 are just referring to line segment 1, line segment 2. So I want to show that the slopes are the same. For perpendicular, I want to show that the slopes are negative reciprocals. Or you can show that the product m1 times m2 is negative 1. And last formula that you could potentially need is the midpoint. You only need the midpoint formula when you have to draw a median. Because a median goes from a vertex to the midpoint on the opposite side. If you want to show that you have a median, you want to show that CD is congruent to AD. If that's true, then D is a midpoint. Therefore, you have a median. But if you need to draw a median, you need the midpoint formula, which is x1 plus x2 all over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. Average the x's, average the y's. Go ahead and just read the table at the bottom on how we would possibly prove these types of triangles. And then we'll go to our first proof. I 
I just want to highlight in each case, um, by definition, say equilateral triangle. In an equilateral triangle, they have three congruent sides by definition, so you have to find the lengths of all three sides to show they are the same. For a right triangle, you can show that Pythagorean theorem works, or you can show that you have a right angle. Either one. Okay? So the first example, I believe, yes, it's already graphed for us. So we're going to show by means of coordinate geometry that it is isosceles. So, Maggie, what formula are we going to use? First thing we want to do is state the formula. If I want to show that I have an isosceles triangle, by definition, an isosceles triangle has at least two congruent sides. To show congruency, what formula do we need? Distance. So we're going to write down the formula. With it being the third unit, you can shorten some of your work, and you could write from the very beginning, and let's skip showing the substitution. So if I want to show, and this is the nice thing about having the picture, okay? There's no guess in looking at the coordinates. In seeing the picture, I can clearly see that the two sides that I want to show congruent are P, Q, and P, R. If you don't have that picture, you might be stuck doing the distance formula three times. So that's where the graph is helpful. So I want to show that P, R is congruent to P, Q. And in order to do that, we have to find the length. So let's, for our notes, skip showing that subtraction. So P, R, for instance, 6 minus a negative 1 is a positive 7 squared. So 7 squared plus 2 minus 6 is a negative 4 squared. You can also check your calculations quickly in your graph. To go from P to Q, we go over 1, 2, 3, 4, go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Bless you. Bless you. All right. So, 7 squared is 49. 49 plus 16 is? 65. So, when I do the other length, I should also get 65. So, looking at PQ now, X2 minus X1, 3 minus a negative 1 is 4. So, we end up with 4 squared plus negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7 squared. And that is also square root of 65. So we're done with the math. Now it's just writing up our statement. Every proof needs to have a final statement. And this is how I suggest writing it, but you don't have to. You have to talk about what you just did. We use the distance formula, so I'm going to say since the lengths, you could say distances, since the lengths of PR and PQ are equal, that means that PR is congruent to PQ. So I use the distance formula to show that the lengths were equal. By definition, an isosceles triangle has at least two congruent sides. So now I'm done. And your therefore statement comes right from the problem. So therefore, using the symbol, triangle PQR is an isosceles triangle. So in number two, since they don't give us a picture, a graph of triangle ABC, let's go ahead and graph it.
by definition, uh, a right triangle has one right angle, so I need to use that definition to help me prove that it is a right triangle. So I'm going to use the slope formula. Now I always put slope equals m because in my work I said, well, and looking at this triangle, Ryan, can you see maybe where you think the right angle would be? That'll help us determine what two sides I need to find the slope of. So I'm just looking at the picture. Do you think the right angle is at A or B? C looks like it's definitely out. You're going to say A? So if I want to, again, right now this is a question. If I'm checking to see if the right angle is at A, I'm going to look at the slopes of AB and AC. So for those two sides, again, I use M to indicate that I'm doing slope. I would show your x2 minus x1 over y2 minus y1 here. I know we didn't in the distance formula, but in looking at your work, I could potentially get you some partial credit in knowing which difference you did wrong. If you didn't show work here and went right to the answer, there's no partial credit to be given within your slope formula. So I just say it out loud for AB, I'm going to have 5 minus 6, 8 minus 5. So 5 minus 6, 8 minus 5. And then for AC, negative 3 minus 6 over 2 minus 5. Then I do the math, negative 1 over 3. Here we have negative 9 over negative 3, which is so since the slopes came out to be negative reciprocals, I know that AB is perpendicular to AC, and that's what I want to write. So since the slopes of AB and AC are negative reciprocals, then AB is perpendicular to AC. Now, the definition of a right triangle doesn't talk about two sides being perpendicular. The definition of a right triangle is simply that a right triangle contains one right angle. So in stating that, that tells me where the right angle is. So I have to state which angle is the right angle. So if angle A is perpendicular to AC, so I just add with angle A, a right angle. Therefore, triangle ABC is a right triangle.